Alafia to all. Greetings of honor coming to everyone from Ifaila Ministry. Last week we weren't able to upload a video, a weekly video, and um, this is due to an important reason whereby we need to um, take a breather and um, refresh what the final ministry is all about and um, we're happy to be with you again this week we give honor to life that brought us all together in the final ministry we talk about real issues that is affecting our lives and how we can all together make effort to remove things that are not helping us to grow as people and um, also in the final ministry the, the God that we talk about is a God of harmony it's not a God of war our God is not a killer our God is God of Alafia last week we talked about jealousy versus siblings we have clarity that uh, anyone who has been able to look at the video we have clarity that you may have been able to pick one or two things that will help you to eliminate spirit of jealousy from your own personal life and that will obviously affect uh, our global world positively um, this week what we're going to be talking about is spirits of jealousy versus our children let's ask ourselves four questions and we that will give us a, a a point to be able to analyze what we're actually talking about. The first question will be what has spirit of jealousy got to do with children? How does spirit of jealousy affect our children? If and when spirit of jealousy affects our children, what are we to do to help them? Most importantly, how are children raised in Africa compared to the rest of the world? Let's take it from the First question, what does spirit of jealousy got to do with children? Hmm, children have nothing to do with spirit of jealousy, obviously, until when they reach a certain age. But our intention here is to approach spirit of jealousy. The age that we're looking at will be from zero to 18. But we, we, the first thing we will say to ourselves is that Children don't have anything to do with spirit of jealousy. However, let's think about it. Spirit of jealousy have problem with children. Who are the spirit of jealousy? Spirit of jealousy are men, women, people in general, adults who don't even know that spirit of jealousy is troubling their lives. From that standpoint, we know that unquestionably, without any question, spirit of jealousy is affecting children negatively. And this problem is a global problem. Now let's look at it from a two scenario standpoint. You have children of Africa and children of the rest of the world. The way from my my experience, children of Africa are being raised differently to the children of the rest of the world. And the reason why this is so is most definitely not particularly to do with the culture of African people, but rather to do with religion. Religion that were obviously been brought to Africa. So we're talking of pre colonization, meaning Bible era and uh, Quran era. For example, Bible would say a heart of our children is full of folly, therefore do not spare a rod from a child. Now connect rod to Cain. That will help you to remember the story of Cain and Abel which is explaining to us that uh, Abel is someone that is directly connected to God and love God 
without compromise. And kin, rod, is the opposite of that. Now, you can see that don't spare a rod from a, from a child. It's, take, it's clear that that's a word of man. That cannot be a word of God. And from my own experience, meaning the journey that the universe has taken me, it is clear to me that God is not a God that beats children. Remember the word of God that says, let children come to me. So when, when and if uh, our children are burdened or disturbed by adults that have been troubled with spirits of jealousy, that is a major problem. Because who do children go to? Because children, until they reach a certain age, their parents or adults, they look to them as if they were God. See how that way we can see, evidently, we are a living God, whom the everlasting God has been given light of life to keep us going. Therefore, if we don't stand firm and strong against spirit of jealousy, <coughs> Where does that leave children when children come to you? So this is obviously a very important reason why we will know that we need to fight against spirit of jealousy. So when your children come to you, you will be able to help them by teaching them that there's such thing called spirit of jealousy and you have to always make sure you do your prayer, your praise against that by saying spirit of jealousy, leave my space because my life and everything about me is with everlasting God that makes me a living God. You teach this to your children. But if yourself is being troubled with spirit of jealousy, how would you be in a good position to help your children to be elevated at all times? Because when our children are not elevated, it means our life is not elevated. Children are very, very important. They are yesterday, they're today, they're tomorrow. This is how men are able to pull the concept of God together. But after doing that, they forget to live their life according to God's ways. Now, the, the, two, the case study here, we're using Africa as a case study here. That's why I said the children of Africa. And let's also remember that Africa is the ancient landmark, the light of the world that makes planet Earth, that's involving America, Japan, Europe, everywhere. And that's the reason why I'm using Africa as a case study. That's why I'm using the children of Africa. In Africa, children, when I was growing up, and I'm sure it's still the same, beating the children is almost like a way of life. And how does people begin to take this on as a way of life. It's true Bible. They think it is the word of God that you must beat a children for a children to become obedient. So if, the children, if you tell children sit down and doesn't sit down, the next thing will be to beat that child. So this does not help children of Africa to, to stand uh, this, this makes African children to be a subordinate to their peers. To the point that at a certain age, when children of Africa come to Western world, they tend to have this characteristic or a bit of look, not wanting to look at adults straight in the eye. And people are not obviously, they will explain to whoever wanted to know that, oh, that's just culture. Beating children, uh, takes away from children, it does not add to children. That's one. Secondly, Quran as well, there's, there's people that teaches children how to uh, learn about Quran. It is uh, an open knowledge, it's not anything hidden or secretive. It's a, a they beat children. We, children will not learn as quick as they should they tend to get beating. Even in secondary school, when I was growing up, there's something they call corporate punishments. A student will be punished just because you come to school late. You'll be beating with cane, with rod, 
So this culture that we do to children in Africa, it is not helping the rest of the black children in the world. Because Africa is a nation landmark. Anything that goes on there, for some reason, and I'm coming from, I'll use the word spiritual, that I connect with that because I prefer to say, you know, I'm body, mind, and spirit of everlasting God that makes me live in God. But because the word is drawn on spiritual term, that's why I'm using spirit, spirit here. Whatever goes on in Africa, the Asian landmark, have a way of reflecting on what happens to everything and everyone else in the world at large. So if children have been beaten or maltreated or, or, or is embedded in a culture that it's the good to beat children to submission or to answer to whatever an older person says, whether it's good or not, Definitely, that is energetically affecting how black children have been treated all over the world. This is the reason that many children have been maltreated all over the world. In fact, I would say this is the reason why people have been killed, why people have been put in jail. Anyhow, why I say that is, even if a man that is 80 or 90 is in jail today, we all know with clarity that it doesn't matter how old a man is, that man is still a child before God. So I'm relating to the situation as every one of us being the children of God, but for this particular video, I'm um, referring to 0 to 18 years old children that have been bidding to submission or to, to obediency. These practices in, the, in, in, in Africa need to be looked at, be reviewed and be renewed. Because if children are today not being uh, beaten, in Africa, for some reason, I have clarity that children, African children, will no longer be uh, mistreated, be undermined, be uh, being abused in the world. I know it's funny to hear, but energetic. I'm talking energetically. Things that we do that energetically affect people in other places of the world. And when we're talking of um, adults energetically abusing children knowingly or, no, or knowingly, it is, it is the, the, the system of spiritual activities that is embedded in, in every situation. Because first of all, an adult will say, well, we will ask ourselves, how would an adult abuse children on what account it is what we do energetically that we don't know it takes place because when we say well adult is not jealous of children it makes sense to say that but when you take a bus back seat and you look at what is going on you will find there's no reason an adult want to be, beat a child if if spirit of jealousy is not a drive behind that adult's behavior or a situation whereby children have been taught to um, to uh, to um, always kneeling down all the time, always prostrating. If you keep children down in this fashion, how do we expect those children to 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 um, recognize um, who they are, standing up? because you've kept them so down for too long. Energetically, this is what we're teaching children. And for some reason, this culture, we, we think it is the best culture compared to any culture in the world. Well, I'm here to say to us, we need to renew it. 
We cannot continue to keep our children down in the name of culture. And we cannot continue to beat our children in the name of culture. You can actually see that genuinely there is a disparity between how children of Africa were raised and the children of the rest of the world. The reason is, do you know that um, most of us that live in the, in the Western world were very much aware that when you beat children, it's actually against the law. And when you beat even your own child, you're liable to go to jail for that. So how come the same law is not being practiced in Africa? Rather, the Bible is telling people to beat their children. Well, is it the Bible or no man? Because the word of God in the Bible is definitely not telling people to be beating their children. And Quran, I can assure you, encourages, is it Quran or the word of man in the Quran encourages children to be beating? All I'm saying is beating children in most African countries, at least I know about Nigeria, is a, is a, a way of life. I'm just saying we need to begin to renew our ways. Every aspect of our ways that we've been practicing that is not of God's word, that God is not right for us to live by. We must begin to review this and renew it. Nobody's going to do it for us. We have to begin to take care of our children. We should be ready to make sure that our children in Africa is able to stand up to their peers as able children that they were born to be. Secondly, when we start between children, as I said, children, African children all over the world will not be abused any longer because whether we like it or not, it is fact that African children have been abused all over the world and we cannot we cannot look away from it by not actually being able to get together and say to ourselves how are we contributing to this energetically meaning knowingly or knowingly and I'm saying now energetically how are I contributing to the abuse of African children black children all over the world is our practices that is not really ours, but is in the religion that you that you take on. I would just like to say that our religion, prior to Bible and Quran, is a phyla, meaning light of the world. And I'm actually also here to say that Quran and Bible, or any other religion for that matter, that are of any ounce of word of God, actually come from. On that note, I'm hoping that I've actually answered the question that I placed before us, meaning what the spirit of jealousy has got to uh, do with children and how the spirit of jealousy affects children. It is uh, the grown-up that are being affected by spirit of jealousy that transfer that to the children. So we need to know that every one of us is being affected by spirit of jealousy until we take, take time out to do the work of renewal, to remove spirit of jealousy from ourselves and from our children so they will not affect the children any longer. And then also the question of how are children generally raised in Africa compared to other side of the world, I think that I've answered this question. And um, and the reason why today's uh, topic was raised is simply for us to start to have clarity that children of the world globally should be raised with love and honor, without spirit of jealousy from grown-ups, knowingly or unknowingly. And children of Africa must not be bowed down anymore. Also, all black children in the world should be able to stand tall, just like every other children in the world. That is the purpose of this uh, uh, topic today. We know that uh, it is part of our culture. 
in the final ministry to make sure that we bring forth the instruction of the week. And the instruction of the week is not the word of my mouth, it's what I know in my heart. The creator of heaven and earth and everything in it has instructed me to speak forth to every one of us so that we have room to be better people. I have clarity that the instruction of the week is God is speaking to us. Man is not a respecter of God way that we speak forth the word of God easily, but we do not live our life according to the instruction of God. And God is saying to us that uh, you put my pre-son to your prisons. You plot to remove the ancient landmark, even though the word of God made it clear to us. Do not remove the ancient landmark. And we all know genuinely Africa is the ancient landmark. You put my children inside your jail cells. Now, this is what God is speaking to every one of us. Hear this with clarity. God says, if I will, and I use if I will because it's coming from my mouth, but we all know that God that I'm talking about, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it, is not a God of if, it's a God of certainty. So God is saying, I will remove if you continue with these practices of killings and putting my children in your jail cells. I will remove my, my son from the sky. I will remove my water from your tunnel, from your tanks, from your taps, from your mouth. For these practices is not pleasing to my heart. And we all know that way of God is the authority over all of us. Therefore, it is high time that we begin to renew our ways. We must remember the way of God. Because word of man and word of God cannot cohabitate. If man meaning every one of us were to know clearly the word of God if we have not been misled. An average person would definitely choose the word of God. So we have to begin to remember way of God. Without dilution, we cannot dilute word of God anymore. We have to remember the way of God so that we can be able to review the way of life that we have lived that is definitely not of God. That way we can renew our ways and be able to reform. That is why Ephilus is here reminding us that it is not a case of God is coming. God is here with us now. We have to reform. We cannot keep practices of killing and putting people in jail just because we can. God is definitely in control of the affairs of man. God is saying, if I'm not in your affairs, how come the sun comes out every day? How come the moon comes out in the night to make sure everything is all right? How come there is still water in our taps? God is definitely unquestionably in the affairs of man. It is high time that we begin to rewind, review, renew, and re reform our ways. There's no other way. Alafia to all, and I keep all my alafia to myself all the time. We give honor all the ancestors and all the generations.
energy of life that is beyond the fire that we use for cooking or for making anything at all. We give honor to all ancestors and all the generations that we are forever a lafia. We celebrate all generations and ancestors forever. Praise of the week, honor to the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it. And we give all thanks and all praise to our living God, everlasting God that, li that makes us a living God. Give on all, we celebrate everlasting God that protect us all the time. And we give honor to Mori Mifaila for keeping spirits of jealousy away from us all the time. I love you at all. And I have clarity that Mori Mifaila will keep us all beyond next week.